Hello Math 7 students, this is Open Up Resources Unit 2 Lesson 4, this is our second video. So to quickly review what we did in our last video, we started writing equations. We had the same proportional tables that we've seen before and we recognized the constant of proportionality. We went across the table here by multiplying by 3. The only thing new is that we added some labels. We used x as a variable to label this column and we used y as a variable to label this column and the reason why that's helpful is when I abstract this and say what about any x well we would still take that x multiply by 3 to go across the table and when I am now across the table I end up in the y column and so we use that to write an equation now we are ready for completely on your own new problem here I'll read it to you and then I want you to pause the video and see if you can work through that table and write your own equation. A bakery uses 8 tablespoons of honey for every 10 cups of flour to make bread dough. Some days they may bake bigger batches and some days they bake smaller batches, but they always use the same ratio of honey to flour. So again, notice that the information that was given to us in the problem is here in the table. This is an important thing to recognize because I'm going to skip ahead here to the homework where it might look like the table is incomplete. They didn't give us any information to answer it, but it's because you actually have to read it. Here it says a certain ceiling is made up of tiles. Every square meter of ceiling requires 10.75 tiles. So when I look here, I can see one square meter of ceiling we can complete the table and know that that will require 10.75 tiles. And now we have enough information here that we can complete that table. So I just wanted to warn you about that. There is enough information, even if the table doesn't have enough to get you started. The information is there. You just have to look for it. Let's go back. Eight tablespoons of honey for every 10 cups of flour. So we have different batch sizes here. We need to start by asking ourselves, how does an 8 change to a 10? If you don't know, use the strategy we've used in the past and work backwards. Use that to fill in the rest of the table. Now we have this H. Hmm, what am I going to do with that H? Well, part 2 says we need to write an equation. Here's your hints. F is the cups of flour needed. Here's the cups of flour column. That means I'm going to give this the label of F. Here it says F is the cups of flour needed for H tablespoons of honey. That means tablespoons of honey is going to get the label H. That should be enough of a hint to help you write your equation. So I want you to pause the video, fill out the table, see if you can write the equation, and then return to the video. Now, maybe I didn't know how an 8 changed to a 10, so we have the strategy that we have used so many times that we know that I'm going to work backwards. So what I should have done here is 10 divided by 8, which is equal to 1.25. Let's check just to be sure. Is 8 times 1.25 really actually 10? Sure is. So 8 times 1.25 is 10. Now I feel confident and I can go ahead filling out the rest of the table. <clears throat> so 1 times 1.25 is going to be 1.25. And 16 times 1.25 is going to be 20. And 30 multiplied by 1.25 is going to be 37.5. So what do we do now? Just because we have a variable doesn't mean we change our process. In fact, that's the reason why I've drilled this into you. We go through this process so that we're ready even when we have something unusual. So I'm going to go across that table by you guessed it, multiplying by 1.25. And h times 1.25 is 1.25 h. How does that help us write our equation? Once again, we were given an h label. 
we've already used it. H times 1.25 is 1.25H. What do I do with that to make an equation? Well, this 1.25H is in the F column. That means that this 1.25H is equal to or is the same as F. And just like that, you have your equation. 1.25H is equal to F, or if you wanted to reverse it, F is equal to 1.25H. Now we have our equation, so let's use that equation to answer these questions. <clears throat> Again, F is equal to 1.25H. When I read through this problem, it says how much flour is needed for 15 tablespoons of honey. So when I read that, I know that the number is going to be 15, but honey is the H variable. That means 15 is going to be H. So whenever I see an H, I'm going to substitute it with a 15. So that equation is F is equal to 1.25, be careful here, remember, 1.25 times H, so 1.25 times 15. Now I know what I need to type into my calculator. I type in 1.25 times 15 and I get F is equal to 18.75. Now again, this is very abstract. We always want to make it quantitative. So F is 18.75, but F, as we see up here, is flour. So when I see F equals 18.75, that tells me that the flour is 18.75. 18.75 watts, you have some more clues here, C, and cups of flour. So we would write 18.75 cups of flour for 15 tablespoons of honey. And now you're on your own again. Answer the next part of the question, 17 tablespoons. What is that going to look like? Pause the video and give yourself a chance to figure that out now. Take a look at my work and see how you did. H is 17 this time. So I took the H and plugged in a 17 instead. Now I have 1.25 times H, which is now 1.25 times 17. Calculated that and I got F is equal to 21.25. Well, what does that mean? Similar to over here, where abstract or this abstract answer will become quantitative when we write 21.25 cups of flour for 17 tablespoons of honey. And now it's time to summarize. This table shows the amount of red paint and blue paint needed to make a certain shade of purple paint called Venusian Sunset. Here is something interesting about this table. Let's compare it to what we saw before. Here we're measuring honey in tablespoons and here we're measuring flour in cups. This is a little bit different. We're using the unit of measure parts and parts is actually really helpful because it can be any unit for volume. For example, if I'm making a really big batch of paint, I would probably be using cups. So three cups and 12 cups. Or if I wanted to make a really, really small batch, instead of using cups, I would only use teaspoons. So three teaspoons and 12 teaspoons. As we look at these tables, I always want you to get in that habit of asking, how do we go across the table? How does a three change to a 12? And if you don't know, check for that one. We see it here. How does that one change to a four? By multiplying by four, of course. So that means we're going to be doing that everywhere on the table, even when I get down here to R. We're gonna take that R, we're gonna move across the table by multiplying by four. And R times four is simply four R. So what do we do with that information? We use our variables and treat them like labels. This R for red paint means that this is going to have the label R. We don't have a label here, but we're using blue paint, so maybe B for blue paint would be a good label. So when I take this label, R, and go across the table multiplying by four, I'm going to get four R, but now it's in this column with the label B. So four R 
is equal to b. Notice that they wrote it in reverse order and that's okay. So we now know how to write an equation. Please make sure you make this connection. We can see that we're multiplying by 4 because that constant of proportionality is 4 and also notice we see that 4 in our equation. What if though we looked at this relationship in the reverse order? So what if I put the blue paint in the left column and the red paint in the right column? Now we have to ask ourselves a question, how do we go across? So how does a 12 change to a 3? How does a 4 change to a 1? Oh look at, I found a 1 in a table that always has good information for us. 1 goes across the table to a 1 fourth by multiplying by 1 fourth. So of course that must be exactly what I'm doing everywhere else in the table. So the b is also going to be multiplied by 1 fourth. b times 1 fourth is 1 fourth b. Let's not forget our labels. Blue paint is going to have the label b and red paint is going to have the label r. So when I take this b as a variable multiply by 1 fourth going across, I end up here in the R column, which means 1 fourth B is equal to R. And just like that, we have an equation. Once again, recognize that the constant of proportionality here for this table was 1 fourth. So what do we see in that equation? We see that same 1 fourth. Fun fact, notice the relationship, we've seen this in the past, when I had the red paint and the blue paint going one direction and then when I switched it, notice the relationship between those constants of proportionality. There's a word for that. That word is reciprocals. Now let's move on to our cool down. Snow is falling steadily in Syracuse, New York. After two hours, four inches of snow has fallen. I see some information. Good thing it's already there in the table, but if it weren't, we could easily put it in the table. If it continues to snow at the same rate, how many inches of snow would you expect after six and a half hours? It says if you get stuck, use the table. Just use the table. It is really helpful to always use that table to figure out how we're going across. So use the table to go across, then we're going to use that to write an equation. How does a two change to a four? We double it. So the one is going to double. One times two is two. And the 6.5 times two is 13. And what am I gonna do here? If I'm going forward, I'm gonna be multiplying by two, but I'm not going forwards, so I need to go backwards. And since I'm going to be going backwards, that means I would need to divide by two. One divided by two is one half. And we now know exactly what we do when we go forwards across this table. We multiply by two every time. So even when I have this weird random x, I still am going to multiply it by two. And x times two equals two x. Now it's time to write an equation. We need labels. Time in hours, we're already using x. Why not continue x? Now, it didn't give us a label that we needed to use here. I'll let you decide. Snow in inches. Maybe we can just use y, so we have x and y. Maybe, since we're dealing with snow, we'll use s. Either way, when I take something in this column and multiply it by 2, so when I take x and multiply it by 2, I get 2x, and no matter what, I'm going to be ending up in this column, which means that it's going to be equal to s. And there's your equation. s is equal to 2x. So now you're ready. How many inches of snow will fall in 24 hours? So again, that means 24 hours, I have given you the x. So 24 is x. So when I use it in that equation, s equals 2x, only now I know that this x, instead of being x, is the number 24. So s is equal to not 224x, but 2 times 24. Remember that multiplication. And therefore, 2 times 24 is equal to 48. So the snow or s is equal to 48. What does that really mean? 48 inches in 24 hours. Don't forget to do the cool down in Canvas for you online learners. And here is your homework. Your homework is the seven 
or lesson four homework section. Complete all those problems. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.